Hello, and welcome to the Pillow Fort of the Mind. The Pillow Fort of the Mind is a safe space to discuss ideas. Today we discuss what is cognitive semiotics. What is it? What is cognitive semiotics? The shortest answer breaks down the two words into separate parts. Semiotics is the study of meaning. Cognition is the study of the mind. Just replace the confusing words with the easy ones. Meaning and the mind. However, this does not tell the whole story. Cognitive semiotics is a loaded phrase. While it progresses out of semiotics, cognitive semioticians may never open a book like this. Additionally, it relies on phenomenology more than traditional cognitive science. So let us start with topics that cognitive semioticians study along with the threads that link them. We may study forms of non-traditional communication found in language, like gestures or pictures, and then relate them to the representation in consciousness or perception. Very importantly, everything someone says, or does, or thinks, is grounded in human experience. There's a direct relationship between the mind and the body. We represent complex concepts and ideas in terms of simpler ones that come out of our body's experience. We can see this in everyday metaphorical speech. Here, we grasp a lid, but now with our minds, we're also grasping an idea. In this sense, we imagine our brain working like our hands. This line continues into how we interact with others. While we all have a subjective experience, we can relate to each other through the commonalities we share with our similar bodies. For instance, we can simulate in our minds what we think another person is thinking based on what we know about how we feel when we run or smile or fall. Think about this next time you're at the movie theater or when you see a picture or a work of art. Also think about this. Artists are scientists of perception. They have developed tools to trick our minds into seeing three dimensions on two-dimensional planes, or to see movement where there is none, or even to trick us into imagining things that aren't even there. Our mind actively constructs the reality we live in. For instance, if we enter a professor's office and later are asked to recall all the items in the room, we will falsely remember books being there, even if there were none. Or if we're given a list like pillow, sheets, room, cover, nighttime, sleep, couch, story, and then we're asked to write all the words we remember, we are likely to falsely add bed to that list. This is an example of top-down processing. At the top, our mind constructs down into our perception of our reality. There are many topics that I didn't get into, like how we think about time in terms of space or how our mind extends beyond our body with things like books or writing in notebooks, or how grouping principles affect visual perception. But maybe I will do another video on these. So I hope everyone enjoys, uh, everyone on the interweb enjoyed this wonderful masterpiece. I wish wisdom upon all of you, and I will see you all again someday, or today in another edition of Pillow Fort of the Mind.